Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish Gaming. This is Neon and we've got some news about Suicide Squad to kill the Justice League. It looks like Batman Arkham Knight is killing its momentum. Apparently, more people are playing Arkham Knight than are playing the new Suicide Squad game on Steam. Womp womp, as the kids like to say, right? So we're gonna talk about this. This game has not been received very well. Of course, I'm talking about the Suicide Squad game. I'm not talking about Batman. Arkham Knight, the Arkham games are classics. They're amazing. Somebody actually had footage side by side. They showed, uh, I think, footage from Arkham Knight and from Suicide Squad. And they're like, it's hard to believe that Arkham Knight is nine years older than Suicide Squad because Suicide Squad had worse graphics somehow. <laughs> you know? So it's like a total downgrade. So let's, uh, let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe wherever you found this episode at, whether it's on YouTube or on Spotify. We greatly appreciate it trying to get this uh, gaming news uh, podcast, I guess we're calling it a podcast, off the ground. This is coming from Game Rant. Nine-year-old Batman Arkham Knight is beating Suicide Squad Steam player count. I saw this over the weekend and I was like, what the frick? Rocksteady's nine-year-old open-world game, Batman Arkham Knight, currently has a higher concurrent player count than Suicide Squad. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Rocksteady's Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is struggling to attract players on Steam, being outdone by the nine-year-old Batman Arkham Knight. Some fans have reacted negatively to Suicide Squad's live service gameplay, though others have been more positive about the game. That's not the only issue. Stop saying that's the only issue. People do not like the way that they wrote Harley. They do not like the way that they treated Batman. Spoiler, they kill him, and it's Kevin Conroy's last voice role as Batman in the Arkham series. Now, the word is that they're going to try to reverse that with DLC or something. I don't know. I don't care to give this game a try. I, I truly do not care. I was actually invited to play... Uh, to play test the game back in October, November, and I had so little give a shit that I didn't even respond. I'm like, I, I don't care. I don't care. It looks stupid. I don't, I don't want to play it. I don't want to play it. Uh, future content updates could potentially revive the player base. Yeah, if they bring Batman back, you know, it'll maybe possibly, uh, maybe possibly they can turn it around. Rocksteady Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is struggling to attract much of a player base on Steam as the game is currently being outdone by the studio's own Batman Arkham Knight, a game that's nearly nine years old at this point. How embarrassing is that? How many hundreds of millions of dollars did they dump into this game? And then they turn around and they hired Sweet Baby Inc., the uh, activist, uh, uh, sensitivity readers turned script writers or script doctors and they just like destroyed this game uh it's been fighting an uphill battle ever since it was announced to be a live service game with many fans outright rejecting the concept yeah i think people are tired of it but warner brothers said that's what they're gonna do from here on out i would not be surprised if the next hogwarts legacy wasn't a live service game you will have to pay tuition forever at hogwarts and it's like an ivy league wizard school, right? So you're going to be paying a lot of tuition. The Suicide Squad game release date was pushed back following an incredibly negative initial reaction to gameplay, with many fans expressing disappointment that Rocksteady was abandoning its single-player roots for a live service co-op shooter. Suicide Squad's launch has been slightly more positive, but the game has still proven to be incredibly divisive. It, it has been positive? I don't, see, I don't see any positivity. Some Suicide Squad game reviews have praised its action story, while others have knocked its repetitive missions and live service elements. Uh, why are you dancing around the issue? People are pissed off about Batman. People are pissed off about the creepy uh, Harley Quinn and uh, Poison Ivy romance that was never mentioned in the previous games, but now it's a thing, and now Poison Ivy is a child. That's pretty freaking weird. People are pissed off about piss. They're pissed off that they piss on the body of the Flash after they kill him. I'm like, what the frick? To its credit, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League currently has a very positive overall rating on Steam. Yeah, after they purged a bunch of ratings. After they purged like 7,000 reviews. So the game clearly has fans at the marketing firm that's 
propping it up. Uh, the problem is there are not enough people playing it. With 4,000 players in game right now, according to SteamBase.io, while Rocksteady's nine-year-old Batman Arkham Knight has 4,300 players in game. It's possible that those numbers are off, but regardless, it's clear that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is having a serious problem with getting people to actually buy and play the game. Anti-marketing. We talk about this all the time. Anti-marketing. <laughs> when you do something incredibly stupid that you knew was going to piss people off, right? And you, you do that repeatedly, and then you draw attention to it, and then you've got people associated with the game saying stupid stuff. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's a game or a movie or whatever, it's anti-marketing. It's like you're basically telling people not to play your game, not to watch your movie, not to buy your comic book. When you lead with some kind of messaging or you, you know, it, it gets leaked that something incredibly stupid and franchise destroying happens and then they just double down on it and the media doubles down on it. It's anti-marketing. It tells people to stay the hell away from your stuff. The situation seems grim, but it doesn't mean that the game can't have some kind of comeback. Suicide Squad's positive, re positive user reviews indicate that there are those who do genuinely enjoy the game, it says, and it's possible that word of mouth could convince more people to pick it up. No, it's, it's actually having the opposite effect. People are playing the game and they're like, this game is sh shite. Can I say that in this video? Because I'm trying to keep this, this, this channel a little more clean than the other one. They're saying it's poopy. It's poopy doo-doo caca. And uh, people aren't even giving it a chance. They're so angry about the Kevin Conroy thing. They're so angry about the live service element. And they do make a connection here between this game and the Avengers. And actually this game debuted with more of a thud than Marvel's Avengers. And we know what happened with that. The company went broke, <laughs> basically is what happened. They shut the game down. So let's go out to Forbes. This is uh, Paul Tassie. I don't know if he's the first one to pick up that, you know, that, that more people are playing on Steam. Uh, I've seen a couple people talk about it, but he said last night when he looked it up, this would have been uh, what, two days ago, two days ago. Last night when I looked up the gap, uh, there was a 1,300 player gap with Suicide Squad ahead, but now Arkham has jumped even more. At the time of this rank, Suicide Squad has 3,700 players and Arkham has 3,900. Arkham Knight is nine years old. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League launched less than two weeks ago and is meant to be an ongoing grindable game once you reach the end. Uh, he, this is a Tassie. He says, I do keep harping on a performance of Suicide Squad where despite decent player scores, the actual numbers appear to be exceedingly poor. Despite decent player scores. Again, there was a whole controversy about whether or not they were real, whether or not it was being corn fed to try to salvage this game. Hundreds of millions of dollars poured into this game, years of development, just to have it destroyed <laughs> at launch because of some really stupid, stupid, stupid decisions. And a lot of those decisions, probably Sweet Baby Inc. I mean, they're behind a lot of the stupid decisions in a lot of these AAA studios. Uh, they have a lot more sway than I think they should have. I think this is a larger picture, he says, which raises concern not just for Rocksteady's future live plans for the game, but I would say Rocksteady as a studio given how much time and money was invested into this specific game. Yeah, if this game fails, they might shut it down. I mean, look at what happened with, uh, was it Crystal Dynamics and Marvel Avengers? It destroyed them. All it takes is one bad game. If you're a AAA studio, all you have to do is release one bad game. And that's it. It's game over. I would also argue it speaks to the larger idea of giant AAA investments to live looter type games if something like this can launch after so many years so flat and have 4% of the player count of Helldivers 2 less than two weeks after launch. Arkham Knight is cheaper. It's $20 to Suicide Squad, $70 for a live service game. Really? Really? And that's what we're going to get with Grand Theft Auto 6. I can I can guarantee you that's that's what's going to happen with Grand Theft Auto 6. There are no doubt many more Suicide Squad players on console than Steam, but there is no real way to spin this. And I think this generates serious questions about long-term support of the game and Rocksteady's future as a studio, whether that's continued support like they had planned or if Warner Brothers will trust them, will even trust them with a budget this big again. I think we're going to see a dramatic shift away from large-scale PVE-based live games like this. Yeah, that's pretty bad when Paul Tassie at Forbes is even like, I don't think Rocksteady is going to survive this. Uh, what do you think? I don't think they're going to survive it either. I think this is terrible. This is a, a, this is a bad look, as they say. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe. We'll talk later.